a lot of people find themselves in a situation where they're just really late to the game. By the time they decided they want to do investment banking uh, and, and they start thinking about getting in, they feel like they're so behind and some of their competition have been working on this uh, ever since they stepped foot on campus freshman year that uh, they get overwhelmed. They're like, how am I supposed to catch up? Hey guys, if you like the content to the show today, I want you to do me a favor and go and click the subscribe button. What that will do is make sure that you get all of our future content as well as they come out and we release new content every single week, okay? Now today I wanna to answer a very popular question that we always get nowadays, which is, what do I do if I'm late to the investment banking recruiting process? You know, because the investment banking recruiting process it's been happening earlier and earlier every single year. Right now, the summer internship uh, applications typically open up halfway through sophomore year if you're a college student, right? Or uh, if you're an MBA student, then it usually happens by the first semester of your first year in school. But so for most of the college students, um, a lot of them get caught off guard because they think that investment banking is this thing that you don't have to worry about until after you graduate, but in reality, you have to be ready to not only apply, but be ready to interview for some of the top firms, if you're aiming for the top firms, uh, about halfway through your sophomore year, okay? Um, and that's as of the time of this recording, which is 2020. Who knows what's gonna happen in the future, right? But the point is, a lot of people find themselves in a situation where they're just really late to the game. By the time they've decided they want to do investment banking, uh, and, and they start thinking about getting in, they feel like they're so behind and some of their competition have been working on this uh, ever since they stepped foot on campus freshman year that uh, they get overwhelmed. They're like, how am I supposed to catch up? So I wanna talk about what to do in that situation today. So first thing is you need to have a game plan, right? Like if you don't have a game plan, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna be successful, right? Um, and to have a game plan, you have to work backwards uh, from, hey, here's the outcome that I need to get to. Here are all the things that I need to get done to get to that outcome. And how much time is it gonna take me to do each of these things that I need to get done, right? So I'll give you guys an example, okay? Um, so here I've listed kind of like what the typical things uh, that you have to get done look like, right? In an in investment banking recruiting preparation process. So. Uh, I've listed them in order. It's kind of like a like a maze here, but step one, you need to fix your application materials, right? So this is like your resume, your cover letter, your LinkedIn profile. These are the things that you're gonna be using to apply for these jobs, right? Um, and also along the ways too, these are the things that you're gonna be using, quite frankly, to help you get more relevant experience. For example, the second step is you have to join relevant student organizations on campus, right? Maybe it's a student-run investment fund, maybe it's a finance club, maybe it's a business fraternity, whatever it may be. A lot of schools now, especially if you're at a target school, there are these uh, student organizations that are kind of like feeder clubs into all the top Wall Street firms. So you're gonna wanna join those if you can, right? For those, you're gonna need your application materials as well. Um, that's why we do that first, right? Then the third step uh, is probably even more important than the student organizations is you need to secure relevant internship experience, right? And so for this, again, you're gonna to have to apply with your resume, your cover letter, and people are gonna be looking at your LinkedIn profile. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing is you have to network with investment bankers. You have to build out a network of bankers uh, who are really impressed by you, and who really like you, who are willing to go to bat for you and help you. And you, when the time comes, you need them to help refer you for the interview, right? Otherwise, it's very, very hard to get the interview uh, because these banks get tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of applications sometimes. Right? Like Goldman Sachs got over 270,000 applications last year, right? And so there's so many applications that if you don't have a referral, your resume is just gonna get lost in the shuffle, right? So that's the fourth thing. The fifth thing is, okay, now the fourth, actually the first four things that we talked about so far, that's all focused on just getting you the interview, right? The other part is if you can get the interview, you have to prepare for the interviews, right? So on, on, on the on the interview side of things, the fifth thing that we work on typically is um, perfecting your answers for the behavioral interviews, okay? And typically we do this first before the technical interviews 
which is not what a lot of people do, but this is what we recommend doing because what we found is that your behavior answers will actually play a much larger role in how effective your networking conversations are. So this is a matter of like order of operations, right? Um, so we do the behavior answers. That's gonna also help you network better and get more referrals. And then six, seven, eight, and nine is preparing for the technical interviews, right? So there are four major areas to the technical interview. There's the three financial statements, there's evaluation methodologies, there's mergers and acquisitions, and then there's leverage buyouts. And that's typically the order that we recommend people learn these things in because um, they kind of build on top of each other. And also like you have to factor in how likely um, are you, how likely is it for you to get questions on each of these topics in your interviews, right? And that's a whole separate topic that we won't discuss in this video, just in the interest of time, but just trust us on this. This is, this is like the best order to do things in, in our experience, okay, from after having worked with hundreds of students. Now, you've identified the things that you need to do, right, uh, to get to the outcome that you, you, you want, which is getting into that investment banking uh, offer, right, or getting that investment banking offer from a top tier bank. The other thing that's missing here is, for this to be a good plan, you need to know how much time is it gonna take for you to do these things, or when should you be doing these things by, right? So here, like on the first uh, three uh, items that we listed, fixing your application materials, that's the quickest thing. That should take no more than two or three days. And then afterwards, of course, as you get more and more relevant experience, you're gonna to continue to make changes to it on an ongoing basis, right? Because it's a living document. Your resume is a living document. It's gonna change over time. However, um, for get, getting relevant experience, whether it's through extracurricular activities or through internships, typically, um, you know, you're gonna have to do that within the first three or four semesters while you're in school because, again, you wanna do these things before the investment banks open up their applications because if you do it after, like a lot of people say, oh, I'll, I'll get some internships uh, my sophomore summer or, or, or my, my junior year even. You can do that, but it won't help you that much, especially for a lot of these applications with the top banks that are opening before the end of your sophomore year, right? Because you're gonna have to apply once the applications open up. So whatever is on your resume, by the time these applications open up, that's what you're going to battle with basically, right? So that's the timing for those things. Then with networking, basically you just wanna start as soon as possible, right? And you wanna to continue to do that until your offer is received, right? Until you, uh, until you have an offer. As they start as early as possible because it's a numbers game at the end of the day, right? Getting referrals, not everyone's gonna, uh, not every banker you talk to is gonna be willing to give you a referral, but the more bankers you talk to, the more likely it is that you're gonna have referrals from every single bank that you're applying to, right? And that should be the goal. And ideally, you even have more than one referral per bank. Like if you got two, even better. If you have three, even better, right? So that's why for networking, you just wanna start as soon as possible. Now, for everything else, for preparing for the behavioral interview and the technical interviews, typically, this is where it gets tricky, right? Um, well, and even in networking too, I'll lump that in with, their, uh, with this category too, which is, most people have no idea how long this stuff is really gonna take them, okay? Like if I ask you, hey, how, long, how much time do you think you need to spend on networking? You don't really know because the reality is you don't know how good you're gonna be at converting these referrals, right? Same thing with like prepping for your behavioral interviews. People don't know how long it's gonna take them to get to the perfect answers because even after you come up with your answers to behavioral questions, how do you know that your answers are actually good enough? How do you know that your answers are actually what the bankers want to hear? Should you continue to work on them? Behavioral answers are one of those things that's so open-ended and so subjective that it's not even a matter of how much time you spend on it. It's just like a lot of people, they, they just, they have their answers and then they don't really know what else they can do to make it better anymore. So then they just stop working on it and they hope for the best, right? So it's hard to say how long that's gonna take you. And on the technical side, a lot of you, since you're learning this for the first time and you're trying to teach this stuff to yourself, you just have no idea how long it's gonna take. And I've honestly seen a lot of students spend upwards of 100 plus, 200 plus hours, um, sometimes even more than that, just to, just to teach themselves all four topics, 
that you need to know for these interviews. And so that's a lot of time, right? But even if you play it safe and you allocate that much time, then you got to ask yourself like, okay, how many months do I have until these applications are going to open up? Um, and then how many, uh, how, how many weeks are in those months? And then how many hours can I spend per day or per week? Right? That's how you got to break it down. You have a monthly plan, you have a weekly plan, down to a daily plan. And then you work backwards to see like, hey, do I have enough, enough time to get all these things done? Or realistically, how much time can I dedicate to each of these areas? Right? That's the level of granularity that you ideally want to get to. Okay, now, again, the problem for a lot of people is one, not only do they know how much time they're really going to need to dedicate to this. Um, and so what we see a lot is they'll just start working on this. And they'll try to get through it as quickly as they can. But then by the end of this process, or like by the time the applications start, they realize they're nowhere close to finishing all of these things and they run out of time. Right? So the number one reason people fail in investment banking recruiting is because they run out of time. They're trying to juggle all of these things on top of maintaining their grades in school and things like that. Right? And so what do you do if you suspect that you might not have enough time left? Um, so there's a better way of doing this, to be honest. This is like having a more concrete and actionable plan, right? That's going to give you more confidence and more certainty and give you more control over your investment making recruiting preparation process, right? And so I want to show you like kind of what the Wall Street Mastermind recruiting plan typically looks like. Um, it's all the same steps that I showed you. Right, but I want to show you like how long it typically takes for us to take our clients through this process. So, again, fixing the application material should not take more than two or three days. Right, joining student organizations that's ongoing throughout your first couple of years in school, you continue to do that. In terms of securing the relevant internship experience, a lot of the times people get stuck on this part because, especially as an underclassman, if you don't have any relevant finance experience. So I was like, well, how do I get relevant finance experience when no finance firm will hire me because I don't have any relevant finance experience? It's a chicken and the egg problem, right? We've actually figured out a way to solve this where we're able to get every single one of our clients their very first finance internship, even if they have no relevant experience on their resume whatsoever, we can do that for them within just one to two weeks. Okay, like from the time they start looking until the time they have the offer, on average, it takes about one to two weeks. And it's worked for every single person that's needed this. And of course, once you get that first internship, now you have that on your resume, you do it for two or three months. And then if you want to go out and get more relevant finance experience and even better, uh, even better firms or better internships or, you know, more impressive, more relevant uh, internships, maybe you, you know, start at a, you know, search fund and you work out, work up to a bigger private equity firm, then you work up to, uh, an investment bank or whatever it's like you're progressively getting better and better with your resume right but that first one is always the hardest to get and then once you have that the second one the third one the fourth one becomes a lot easier because now you have that finance experience on your resume and people are more willing to hire you right and then from there on the networking side we take you through about a nine hour training on all the ins and outs of networking so you're going to learn all the best practices and networking strategies that we have our clients go to. And the reason why you want to invest this nine hours of time up front, as opposed to just going straight into the networking process, is because this is going to massively increase your referral rate. So most of the students that we talk to, their referral rate is anywhere from one to 3%. Meaning if they reach out to 100 bankers, they might get one or two or three referrals. What you want to do before you start networking with bankers is you want to learn all the best practices so that you can optimize every single step of your networking funnel such that you can convert a higher percentage of the, the, the bankers that you actually reach out to. So we're targeting closer to like a 10 to 15% referral rate. And if you can do that, so you can imagine you are three to five times more efficient, let's just say, right? You're three to five times more efficient in terms of converting. That means you can spend anywhere from a third to a fifth of the time you, that you would have spent on networking um, than you would have originally, right? Like instead of reaching out to, you know, uh, 200 or 300 bankers, 
Maybe you only need, need to reach out to, you know, 70 to 100 bankers. How much time would that save you, right? So that's a really important thing. On the behavioral side, on average, it takes our clients about 20 to 25 hours to learn how to answer all the questions in the way that the bankers are, are, are looking for and to draft out their answers and then for us to give them the feedback on their answers so that they know definitively whether the answers are good or not and then for them to practice those answers. Okay, so now you know like, okay, that's how much time I need to spend on my behavioral interview prep, right? And to be honest, 20 to 25 hours is probably even more time than what most people are spending on behaviorals. But the reason why people aren't spending as much time on behaviorals is because again, going back to what I said earlier, they don't really know what there is to do for the behaviorals. It's like, how much, how much more can I do to my answers? My answers are my answers. I, I don't really know how to make it better, right? So that, that, that's what we do on our side, 20 to 25 hours on the behaviorals. And then the last part, the four different areas of the technical interview, again, the three statements in accounting, uh, three, three financial statements in accounting, evaluation methodologies, the mergers and acquisitions, and leverage buyouts, combined should take about 20 hours or so, okay? Um, and so you look at everything here, add it up together, on average it takes our clients about 50 to 60 hours to go through everything here. Typically, depending on how much time they have and how busy they are with school and everything else they have going on, they can do the 50 to 60 hours within 30 to 60 days. Because you think about it, that's like, spending about one to two hours a day on your investment banking uh, recruiting process or on your preparation process, that shouldn't be too much to ask, right? Like if you can't make time to spend one to two hours a day on recruiting, then you probably don't, you probably don't deserve to get into banking. You probably, you just, you just shouldn't, uh, you just shouldn't have, uh, get this job over other people, right? Who are working so hard to get in. And so 50 to 60 hours, that's really all it needs to take. Right, so this is why we have so many students who come to us last minute, maybe they come to us like second semester of sophomore year when a lot of these banks have already started. Or sometimes people even come to us junior year. We've even had in, in extreme scenarios, we've had people come to us um, after they graduated from senior year. We just had a client who came to us recently in July, July after his senior year. So he graduated in May, he came to us two months after he graduated, he still hadn't found a job yet. And he asked us to help him with the recruiting process. And then uh, four months later, in November, um, he, he got an offer from Jeffries, which is almost unheard of. Like, usually, like, if you've already graduated from school, like, you're probably not getting into a top-tier bank like Jeffries, okay? And so, but the, the point is, the reason why he was able to do that is because he knew he was so late already that he had to condense everything down to the most efficient process possible. He needed a game plan. Uh, where he knew definitively how long each thing is going to take and then we can map, map everything out together again at the monthly level down to the weekly level down to the daily level so he knows exactly what he needs to do when to do it what order to do it in and how to do it right he doesn't have to spend any time trying to figure anything out on his own or doing any trial and error and that's usually what kills you that's what's going to take a lot of time is if you're not sure what you should be doing and you're trying to experiment with all these different things and you're not sure whether it's going to work or not, right? So that's what I wanted to walk you guys through today. Really, investment making, recruiting doesn't need to be as hard as you're making it out to be. Even if you're starting late, even if the recruiting timeline continues to move up every single year, it doesn't need to be very difficult. You can go from being an unqualified candidate to a highly qualified candidate in just 30 to 60 days um, if you know exactly what you're doing okay so hopefully you guys found this to be helpful um, if you guys feel like you're in that situation where you need help um, with accelerating your preparation process then feel free to reach out to us reach out to our team we're happy to jump on a call with you talk to you discuss what your situation is see where you're at and then map out a similar game plan for you uh, that you can then go on execute on either on your own or with our help whatever it is that you want to do right um, so if you want to do that you can go to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply um, the streets abbreviated to st so again it's www.wallstmastermind.com slash apply and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you hey there i hope you enjoyed this video if you're looking for more customized advice that's tailored for your specific situation then i invite you to book a free strategy session with our team at the link below we'll talk to you soon